Now that we've seen the aldol condensation reaction and the Michael addition, let's take a look at the Robinson annulation, which utilizes both of those mechanisms. In this case, I am starting with an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound, and I also have a 1,3-dicarbonyl compound, and I'm treating it with base. So my first step in this reaction is going to be deprotonation, and I'm going to deprotonate at the carb at the alpha carbon that's between the two carbonyls, this active methylene. So that is going to be the most prevalent nucleophile in my reaction mixture. And remember for an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl, it is the beta carbon that is going to serve as the electrophile. And so the first reaction that's going to take place is a Michael addition or a conjugate addition. And so I'm going to have a new carbon-carbon bond formed between the alpha carbon and the beta carbon of my methyl vinyl ketone. There's one, two, three, four carbons here. So we want to make sure we don't lose any carbons. This is a very common mistake that students make. So there's one, two, three, four. You can track those carbons there. Uh, but after the Michael, the reaction does not stop here because after the Michael, under our basic reaction conditions, this can continue because we are now set up to do a second reaction, an aldol condensation. And the aldol is going to happen because we have a new alpha carbon as our nucleophile that's one, two, three, four, five, six atoms away. There's our magic number, six atoms away from an electrophilic carbon, a carbonyl. And when we have an alpha carbon attacking a carbonyl carbon, then we call that an aldol reaction. So that is the second bond that's going to be forming. We're going to form a six-membered ring. Uh, we go ahead and number our carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to form a six-membered ring. And this is going to have an OH now when I attack this carbonyl. So that's carbon 6, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so carbon 1 is attacking carbon 6. At carbon 2, we have our carbonyl. And so there's our aldol reaction that we get a, a beta hydroxy ketone, right? A beta hydroxy ketone is our product. But that is typically not their final product as well because we're going to do this under thermodynamic conditions with enough heat to promote the dehydration step. That's the condensation step of the reaction where we lose a molecule of water. And that's typically the driving force here to go to the stable product, which is an enone, right? an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. But in the Michael reaction, what we I'm sorry, in the Robinson annulation, what we form is a cyclo hexenone. We get a cyclohexenone product. So there are two new bonds that were formed in this reaction. If we want to track the original four carbons that were in our um, in our electrophile, our methyl vinyl ketone, we could find those four carbons right here. So we just uh, we formed one bond between this enolate alpha carbon and the beta carbon of the alpha beta unsaturated. And then the second bond formation was this alpha carbon enolate attacking the one of the two carbonyls that we had in our um, in our stab original stabilized enolate. So let's take a look at the mechanism here so we can follow along on how the Robinson annulation happens. It's kind of a long mechanism, but it's... Uh, each, each step is just the individual reaction one at a time. So first we do a Michael reaction, and then we do an aldol condensation. So our first step is going to be deprotonation of the alpha carbon using hydroxide. We can do this in equilibrium. Because this is a stabilized enolate, it's probably favored in the forward direction here. But once we start generating that enolate, then it can attack the 
alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. Okay, and it's possible to attack the carbonyl as well to do a 1 2 addition, but this is a reversible reaction. And so if it did attack at this position, if it attacked the carbonyl, the O minus can come right back down and kick it back out. So this comes back to the 1 2 versus 1 4 addition because this is stabilized. Because this is stabilized, it's a weaker base, it's a weaker nucleophile, it, uh, it, it prefers the 1 2 addition instead. And I'm sorry, the 1 4 addition instead. We get the conjugate addition. Okay, so uh, our product here is going to be our new carbon carbon bond between these two carbons alpha carbon to beta carbon, alpha carbon to beta carbon. We get an enolate intermediate. And so the third step of the Michael addition is protonation. So we could use water as our acid if we just use hydroxide in that first step. And so that is how we get our final product for our Michael addition. So uh, I, this is a pattern that we see a lot of times, deprotonate, deprotonate, and then attack, deprotonate, and then attack, and then protonate. That pattern is uh, very common for base catalyzed reactions, deprotonate, attack, and protonate. And now we're going to do the aldol reaction, the aldol reaction because now we have a potential for an intramolecular aldol where we have an alpha carbon that is uh, appropriately situated from a carbonyl. Okay, and now look at all the alpha carbons we have. We have the ones on the end here, we have this middle one, we have this one, then we have this one. It's possible to deprotonate in all of those positions, but when I deprotonate, at this position, then I end up with an enolate that can undergo an intramolecular addition. And that's why that's going to move us in the forward direction. Right, because this enolate is six atoms away from our carbonyl. We could go to either side. This one's maybe a little easier to see. So that's six atoms away. And so we could have our second step of our aldol. So it was our first step. Our first step was to deprotonate. And our second step is to attack. And this is where we're forming our ring. This is, um, this is a symmetrical molecule. So I drew it a little up, flipped over from the, from the first example. So if we number our atoms, that's always a good idea. One, two, let's do that in blue so we can see it a little better. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here's our alpha carbon and our carbonyl. Three, four, just methylenes. Five is the group with the carbonyl on it. Six was the carbon we attacked. And that also has a methyl on it. So we can track all of our uh, atoms that way. Okay, and what's our last step of the aldol? Reaction, the aldol, last step of the aldol, aldol reaction is to protonate. So there's our DAP pattern again. Protonate the O minus to get the neutral product. And then the last part of our Robinson annulation is always going to be that dehydration step to go to the alpha beta unsaturated. Remember, that is a two step process. You could describe that as beta elimination. Or E1CB is the mechanism. E1 uh, meaning it's a stepwise elimination involving the conjugate base. So there's two steps. Step one is make the enolate. So again, I'm going to do another deprotonation here, and I could deprotonate anywhere. I could deprotonate the O minus, but that would just bring me back to here. I could deprotonate at any of these alpha carbons. Okay, but when I deprotonate at this position, right next to where I have my beta leaving group, then I have a different mechanism that can happen, and that's going to lead to a more stable product. So I'm going to have my enolate. And so step two of that elimination reaction is eject the beta leaving group. 
So when I make the enolate in this position, it sees that hydroxide as a leaving group and I can, sh I can shift over my pi bond and kick the hydroxide out. So that's where we have our condensation reaction and we get our cyclohexenone product. So when we see a target molecule with a cyclohexenone uh, pattern in it, a uh, pattern of functional groups, then the Robinson annulation is a reaction we can consider for its synthesis.